Good morning. This tutorial is going to be covering running a frequency and measures of central tendency. I'm working in the MCIC dataset. And we're just going to go up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. And you're going to have a frequency box that comes up. Your default settings are going to look more like this, where you have uh, several words on the left column here. I went up and changed my settings in the default by going to edit options uh, you can change them there to always show the variable names this little menu I'm getting right here is by right clicking and choosing display variable names and the difference between the two is that the default labels correspond to the labels here in the data set and the default or the names correspond to the names of the variables in the data set I find variable names easier and faster to navigate when you're looking for particular variables. Other little things you can do there is you can sort them by file order, which means they appear in the same order as in the data set, or by alphabetical order, ABZ order. So I'm going to run two different variables here. I'm going to run income and I'm going to run region. So first I'm going to look for region. The first option was just to scroll through the list and look for it in alphabetical order. Uh, I just Or the other option is to type it in. If you type in REG real quick, you'll pop out to the first variable that starts with REG. Notice we have our region and reg sour. So if you actually type in REGIO, it narrows down the process for you. You'll have to type quickly because if you type slowly, it's not going to take you to where you want to go. Two ways to bring it over. You can click and drag it, or you can just use this little arrow box. The other variable I'm going to look at uh, is going to be, an, I'll look at age actually. There we go, age 01, I just typed in AGE real quick and that's where it brought me. I'll bring these over. To get my measures of central tendency, I click up on the statistics box and you'll have many different things that you can choose from. Central tendencies are over here. Those are the mean, median, and mode. And then we also usually want things like standard deviation or minimum, maximum. These aren't measures of central tendency, but they're nice to know. Click continue. And then I usually ask that everybody puts their code into the syntax, so go ahead and click Paste. If you would have clicked OK, it would have just run the frequency command for you right away. But by putting in syntax, we're able to take notes. And as you can see, I've already got a note up here that says, here are my descriptive statistics for age and location. That way when I save it and I look back, I can see what I was doing. And I just select my frequency command. I go ahead and run it and here's my output notice on the left side this is a little output tree so you can collapse and shrink different parts if you got a large output or you want to delete chunks of it that's a good place to do it first box you're going to come to is a statistics box you'll have one column for every variable that you ran together so in this case we had two variables the region and the age tells us how many people we had how many were missing from there and we have a mean, median, and mode, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum. If you would have checked off more of those boxes, they would just keep filling out the information there. Now keep in mind what variables you're running and what types of variables those are. Region is a nominal variable, as we'll see when we scroll down, and age is an interval variable. Nominal variables, you'll probably recall, do not use a mean, um, and oftentimes don't use a median either, because that's just not how they're measured. They're just categorical without ranking. So the only one of these that actually applies the nominals are the mode. So let's remember the number one was the mode for region. Mode being the answer that was most commonly chosen. Age, since it's interval, applies to all three. And the most common age was 38. Median, which is the one that's directly in the middle of all of the answers, if you put them from the lowest to the highest, 42 was exactly in the middle, and the mean was about 45, so the average age of the respondent was 45. The age variable slightly skewed, as you can tell, if it was a normal curve, all these would be exactly the same, but were slightly skewed because age respondents didn't start till around 18 or so. That's why some of these means will end up being a little higher than what it actually could be. And of course, standard deviation does not apply to the nominal variable, but a standard deviation of 28 years does apply to age, 
Minimum and maximum tells us what was the lowest value and the highest value available in the uh, valid sections. And of course, if you want a range, you just state minimum, comma, maximum, or maximum minus minimum to calculate your range. If we go down, here's, oh, it went down a little too far. Here's the frequency table for region, and we can see the Chicago and the different counties, and something else that looks like it was probably just a data entry error. We had a blank one there. If you did not turn on your value labels options up in the edit options section, if you did not turn those on, it'll just state Chicago and then the various counties. But turning them on gives you the value labels, which are useful for recoding and things like that later. We then have frequencies, how many counts were actually given for each particular value. The percents, which is the frequency divided by the total percentage. The total percentage down here includes all of our valids and the missings. Missings are either input by the data set creators or if we've gone in and told something do not count particular people here remove them from the analysis and the valid percent shows the percentages frequencies divided by the total of valid individuals next we have cumulative percent which is nothing more than each valid percent added to the one in front of it so we start with 38.3 we add in 29, we get 67, add in 10.8, you get 78.2, etc., all the way up to 100%. It's important to keep in mind that when you're running t-tests, cross-tabs, and all these other different variables with at least two or more, the only ones that are going to be included are the ones in the valid percents, not in the missings. After that, we have the age variable. This was interval, and each unit that we have here represents an age, so we don't actually have a value label per se in there. 25 is just 25 years old, 30 is just 30 years old. And the frequencies of the individuals, those valid percents, the cumulative percents, and it just keeps going until you get down to the bottom. If for some reason you have um, arrows down here and it may say 1 through 100 of 200, that means your output table here has been truncated. There's much more information that's down below. You can actually double click on an output table and see what it would look like in its own window. And if it's truncated, you'll have extra options to see those uh, truncated features. Alternatively, you could also right click and copy a particular table and paste it into Excel or another spreadsheet program and it will show you the full table without it being truncated at all. So this is running frequencies with measures essential tendency. Again, the commands are analyze, descriptives to frequencies, select your variables, click statistics to choose which measures you would like, you click continue, click OK to run them directly or click paste to put it in your syntax, and then just go from there.